And let me thank you to invite me. I'm very honored and happy to be here. And I think that these sort of conventions are very much needed and appreciated in the publishing world. Uh, and I also would like to thank, thank you for the previous uh, presentation. I do think that there are lots of similarities and uh, some differences between different national markets. And uh, I also would like to repeat this call for looking into statistics in more granular ways. There are, of course, big differences between looking at sales compared to looking at volumes, compared to, for instance, looking at profits. And it's very, and also like sales in volumes compared to readership. We know that sometimes you have huge increases, for instance, in uh, children's books, uh, but you don't have more children reading. You have some kids having bigger bookshelves. So uh, I really much uh, sympathize with this idea. So I already had my presentation. I'm a researcher from the start. Uh, I've written some books and uh, I've taught publishing studies. My, my subject is uh, organization theory. Uh, and I also have this uh, new research grant um, uh, to do research for two years full time, um, apart from being the executive director for House of Innovation. Sometimes you want this sort of identical twin of yourself that could do the other parts. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. Uh, Sweden is a very small country in the outskirts of Europe, and I just want to give you a very brief historical view of the audiobook market in Sweden. The, this is the first, uh, uh, what we think at least, is the first audiobook in Swedish, uh, Sweden uh, from 1952. It's called... Uh, Music in Darkness, it's a, um, it's a collection of poetry. And what I think is important to understand about this, mar this market is that it grew both stepwise and rapidly. First, uh, we had a lot of state funding to do audiobooks for uh, visually impaired people. And so that was, the, that was the full market. And then in the late 90s, we had um, the first sort of uh, semi-commercial or commercial outbreak in the audio market uh, where we uh, sold audiobooks on CD-ROM. Um, and then uh, uh, Storytel started in 2005 with the first um, digital subscription models uh, in Sweden. And uh, it, that only these first years, it started 2005, that's one year prior to Spotify, for instance. So it's a quite old company for this sort of digital company. But still, uh, it took many years until it really boomed. So for a lot of times, it was more or less uh, almost bankrupt and very, very small. Uh, the revenue model has been discussed immensely. Uh, and you know, I think that it's evident for all of us that it's, the, it's not only the, uh, the format, but it's also the business model that is different and the consumer behavior. Uh, we had different uh, value-added taxes on the digital books and uh, on physical books up to 2019. So there's also a lot of things happening with legislation in this area. This is in 2009, where Jonas Telander pitched his uh, uh, storytell idea in the uh, Swedish version of Dragon's Den. And I think that it's um, worth to note the, uh, the phone that he uses at this time. This was the time before we had any real penetration of uh, smartphones. Uh, and he got one million from this uh, TV show, uh, proved to be a very good investment over time. Uh, but it was really in 2015 that the whole boom of the uh, Swedish um, digital phenomenon started to grow. And Storytel is still and has always been the dominant player. There are a few competitors. BookBeat, that's owned by Bonniers in Sweden, the very big publishing company. Next Story, Bookers Play, and then of course Audible. But the, the audiobook market has been more or less synonymous with the Storytel. And that's why I focus mostly on them. Uh, just to give you a brief baseline, in 2021, subscription platform, uh, platforms accounted for 26.2% of the total market share in sales, making it bigger than physical bookstores. 
uh, and we had close to 44 million streams in 2021 compared to uh, 27 million sold physical copies. Of course, there is an obvious difference between a stream and uh, buying a physical book. You can buy a book and you don't need to read it anytime or you can read it 10 times. But still, these are very interesting figures. Uh, and uh, one thing also with the subscription model is that there isn't just one model. The sort of basic model is that you can have one model, one subscription for 169 crowns, roughly 17 euros a month, and then you can read how much you want and listen to how much you want. But the sort of backside to this uh, business model is how you compensate the, the authors and the publishing houses. You can either do it by a revenue share, that is that you first look how was the, you take say 50% of your sales, your revenues, and then you look at how much did people consume, and then you proportionate that out to the publishing houses and the authors. Or you can uh, offer a fixed compensation over time. But this is something that I will come back to because we have had a huge increase in sales, uh, a huge increase in volumes compared to sales, meaning that every subscription now is used multiple times as much as it was just a few years ago. These are the market shares. I will not uh, go that much into them, but you can see that we had this, of course, this corona effect. Uh, if you look at the fiscal, the brick and mortar stores, they used to account for 35% uh, of the market share in 2016. Now they're down to, to, uh, to 20%, and the subscription platforms used to be 8.5%, uh, and now they account for 26% of the market. And also note that the the total market uh, has grow, grown every year since 2016, and especially in 2020, where it um, was sort of the a very a record year for for the book market as a whole. Even though it was the worst year for um, for uh, our fiscal bookstores, and so this also is uh, this is the. Um, uh, how the different market channels developed over time. We can see that we have had, had a decline for physical bookstores for many years, even before uh, uh, Corona hit. Uh, the internet retails had a very, I mean, look at 2020. Uh, it had a huge uh, upswing uh, compared to physical bookstores. And this is sort of interesting because of course, these, these special pandemic effects are sort of limited, uh, but uh, we could also see big differences within the physical bookstores. For instance, even two uh, different stores in central Stockholm, one increased their sales and one decreased their sales by lo lots. And it was because in one part of the town, people live, and in the other part, you have a lot of offices. So even though it's sort of... Uh, very close to each other, they had huge effects in the sales. And the, we see here that the subscription platforms have grown by 60%, by 50%, uh, and so on. And they also had a dip uh, during Corona. Many people have this narrative that it's um, uh, always good for the digital subscribe, subscription sites to... Um, uh, to um, um, they, that they sort of benefit from the pand pandemic, but they argue that it's harder to market themselves in, uh, during the pandemic because you can't do any, these sort of billboards uh, will not reach people, you don't have the same, um, that people interact and talk to each other. So I talked to the uh, communications director of uh, Storytel yesterday, and he said that now they have, you know, had... Um, a huge increase again from uh, they did like 16.2% uh, at, at a whole. Uh, Storytel grew by 20% and now they are up to 20, 35%. So there are lots of things happening. Uh, and also, I sh this is in, uh, in uh, K-sec, meaning that uh, 5 billion Swedish crowns is roughly. 500 million uh, euro, just to get an understanding. So uh, what we can see here is that 
the Swedish total book market has grown quite a lot in just a few years, from four to five billion Swedish crowns. And the whole increase, more or less, is the subscription platforms that grew from uh, 339 million to 1.3 uh, billion crowns. Uh, so, uh, the topic of today was a paradise of the sub subscription model. And so, uh, I don't know if we should pu put a question mark uh, after that uh, sentence or not. Uh, and if it is, for whom is it uh, um, paradise? I would argue that the subscription sites have clearly expanded the market as a whole. Uh, and uh, even though there might be some negative effects on physical book sales, the sort of total effects are clearly positive for the book market. And what they've done that they brought more um, customers in, people that uh, didn't really use to read physical books come into these sites and they uh, spend lots of money. I mean, 169 Swedish crowns uh, on a full year. That's, you know, you go from this very low customer to suddenly be uh, on the sort of high end of uh, the typical uh, book co consumer. And it has made uh, books more ac accessible for um, people. Uh, you, they measure, these companies measure when people listen. And you can see, for instance, peop commuters, uh, when they commute to their uh, offices, people listen. And they do it uh, like before they're going to sleep. And there are, uh, I had a um, painter at my house who repainted the house, and he listened to these audiobooks constantly. So he listened to 50 book, 52 books a year, he said. And that's, I mean, uh, quite remarkable, and he wouldn't be able to, of course, read with a physical book and paint at the same time. Uh, while the um, uh, re re retail sales uh, have increased quite, uh, quite a lot, uh, I think that it's also good to look at the, um, at the um, uh, publishing houses and uh, indirectly the authors, because even though we've had this huge increase in the retail um, market, uh, the increase in, for publishing houses hasn't been quite uh, as good. It's been good, but not quite as good. And so if you compare uh, the statistics on what uh, publishing houses, their revenues compared to retailers, you can say that in 2016, the uh, publishing houses accounted for 67% 67, 67 of the retail sales, and now they are down to 51%. So this is something that I think is uh, a bit worrisome. Uh, and as I just said briefly before, the average subs subscription has been used more and more over the years. So in 2015, uh, it, 3.6 million streams were sold for, uh, for 339 million uh, Swedish crowns. And now in 2021, 44 million streams were sold for 1.3 billion. So that means that the every, if you compensate people by, with a revenue, uh, mod, revenue share model, then every book gets paid less and less because of this huge increase in volume. Uh, with the revenue share business model, the average income per minute has declined substantially. And that goes also if you have fixed uh, prices, because if they would uphold high fixed compensation per books and see this in huge increase in volume, then all of these uh, companies would have gone bankrupt already. I mean, it, do it isn't a sustainable business model. Uh, and uh, the, also the business model has changed from compensating publishing houses and authors by copies or units of, um, of um, books um, to consume time. And this makes a huge difference. For instance, if you have a novel that is 30 hours long compared to a children's book that is five minutes long, should they have the same compensation? I mean, it's, it's an open question and people can have different, but it's, 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 I think that it's important to emphasize that these sort of seemingly objective uh, business models have huge impacts on different kinds of books. Uh, and also another thing is that the big, two biggest publishing houses in Sweden, Bonnier and Nordstedt, they are vertically integrated with the platforms BookBit and Storytel, which is the biggest platforms. And that, of course, makes 
this increase in digitalization, power, already powerful publishing houses even more dominant and powerful. So this is something to bear in mind. Uh, the control of algorithms and digital curating is a great benefit. And what I mean by that is that the digital window, uh, when you go into your, uh, your Storytel uh, subscription, you're not really confronted with that many books compared to if you go into a physical uh, bookstore or a library. You see a lot of books, but in a, in a uh, phone, the, the algorithms, what they front to you uh, is very important. And also um, uh, the, uh, the control of which books are going to be in the subscription service. So we've had, for instance, conflicts between Nordstedt and Bonnier where they have excluded or used algorithms to not front uh, the competi their competitors' books, etc. And uh, it's also very good to know that these actors have been fueled immensely by, by capital. Uh, from a financial point of view, these marks are clearly not uh, steady state. We, they do not make any profits. Uh, they are like Amazon. You sort of uh, grow with a strategy to just take bigger and bigger market shares, expanding, and then you hope to be profitable in the future. And so uh, that's, uh, if you compare the typical bookstore and a subs subscription um, actor, then it's uh, very much like comparing apples and oranges. Uh, illustrators and graphic designers are challenged by the digital book formats. That's pretty obvious. You don't have uh, illustrations in audiobooks and also uh, the uh, sort of uh, traditional book designers, uh, when they are having their ebooks, uh, when they are having their physical books turned into ebooks, they often look quite bad, to be honest. Uh, I would also like to show the, the, the most dominant player, Storytel, their uh, stock market uh, price. This is, is uh, very interesting in. Uh, now, when uh, Jonas Telander, the CEO, when he retired, uh, the, uh, the chair dropped 25% in a day. And you can see also before that that it's highly volatile, that it goes up and down. And you know, what was worth 250 crowns just one year ago is now, uh, when I took out this picture, worth 67 crowns. So it is uh, also, from a financial point of view, a very interesting market. So, conclusions. I would say that, uh, yes, it might be a paradise for consumers which get uh, books cheaper. This is the most cheapest format there is. And uh, we can see that uh, it makes it more accessible. People uh, go, and have a, uh, and go out and jog or go to the gym and listen to audiobooks. You can cook and read at the, or listen to audiobooks at the same time, etc. So it is uh, a very strong enabler for consumer behavior. Uh, and uh, the book market as a whole has had a huge uh, growth, but it's uh, benefiting various actors to different degrees. Uh, and um, of course, uh, also the competition within these subscription uh, services have increased immensely. When people saw that we had this huge boom in audiobooks, every publishing house has wanted to partake in that and publish more and more um, uh, audiobooks, which in itself is quite an expensive format. You have an, this narrator that must read the book, and so it's um, more costly to do an audiobook than a physical book. And so uh, if you look at the retailers, uh, publishing houses, and authors, they all have different challenges with the digital transformation. And this uh, question about how the, the uh, digital transformation is uh, transforming the Swedish book world is, uh, I would say, in constant debate in, uh, in Sweden, in cultural pages, and uh, in the industry. Uh, and it's also this ongoing discussion if digital formats are beneficial or uh, detrimental to the quality of literature. Is it only the sort of crime and romance novels that people read or listen to in these um, models, or can also more quality literature 
have a future uh, in this digital um, era. So increased competition within the platforms, driving average revenues per minute down. Uh, revenues are also shared with narrators. That's something that to keep in mind when we discuss. Uh, you have one more um, actor to share your revenues with. And um, uh, also one note is that the state support of literature, which is quite semi-good in Sweden, um, they do not take digital formats into account. Uh, so if there is, if you would be a sort of a sneaky publisher, you can publish a book in 4,900 copies to get uh, the chance to have state subsidy. And then you don't care if it's the book will not be available in the fiscal bookstores because you know that the other people will just read it online in the subscription models. So that's something that should be also accounted for in the, um, in the coming future. So thank you so much.